Good luck. Welcome back to the Shogi Teaching Ladder. Uh, this is week 53, commemorating our one-year anniversary of the ladder. Um, so, as usual, I will leave open the possibility of either playing third file rook or playing central file rook. If they do intend to play static rook, uh, there's a good chance I could play central file rook. Um, however, if they play a swinging rook strategy, I think I should do return the favor. Okay. Well, um, that's option number three. I gotta think about this one. Huh. Okay, they've covered this weak point. That's true. Well, we have been receiving numerous lectures about fourth file rook strategy on Shogi Harbor's uh, Shogi Sunday program. Or rather, uh, yeah, we've received lessons both on Saturday and Sunday about this sort of thing. But I'm going to insert this move first to ensure that are they going to be playing an Anaguma strategy or are they going to return um, this pawn advance? And they do. I don't particularly care for playing Anaguma myself, so therefore I throw this in. Uh, they do immediately return this, and now I'm considering seriously fourth file. Although this would cut my silver. Hmm. Interesting. Um, man, I have a habit of getting into the weirdest positions. Um, hmm. I cannot sate my own curiosity. Uh, so I could advance my gold general with the idea of bringing this bishop forward. Um, that would be flexible and leave open the possibility of playing fourth foul rook, although fourth foul might not be appropriate. Um, this is tough. I'm confused. I could play third foul rook. They push this pawn, I push, they push, I bring my rook up. Now, if I play third foul rook, I'm dropping one of these two pawns. It's not feasible right now. All right, we'll avoid the tricky shenanigans and just close this diagonal. As tempted as I am to go into complications, um, this is still flexible. I don't like that I've closed the diagonal because I really like complications in general, but they don't favor me here. Also, we might see a near repeat of my previous teaching ladder game. We might see a very near repeat of it. Um, okay, I don't know where, where my audio has gone. Some of my moves are not clicking. Okay. So they do open, or begin to open, this fourth file, noting that I have um, stopped defending my bishop here. Um, uh, 
Um, well, huh, that's better for them than I thought it would be. Um, I think this is still playable. I think this does not throw the game. So I'm intending to play my silver to the center next, cutting off the square in front of my pawn. Um... Hmm. One other consideration is that I might want to open my rook immediately here, given that they've not completed Boat Castle. Um. Yeah, I'm curious about this. Again, I just got burned in my last teaching ladder game for playing this, but... In that game, I advance the silver. In this game, I'm just pushing uh, the rook pawn. So, this is different. How different? Well, we'll find out. If it's different enough to matter. Um... Also, it does not help that I don't know, like, what castle to play when I'm playing Static Rook. Um, okay, yeah, that's a reasonable development. That makes sense. Although, this bishop does become a bit of a target. So, I ask if they will close this diagonal. Instead, we have the standoff here. Which, again, I think is fine. What's less fine is that I don't know how to castle now that I've done all this stuff. Um, this pawn becomes a target, this pawn becomes a target. But I need to defend my fourth file. Um, also, perhaps the third file is a path for me to make progress. And if I don't, then perhaps this knight and rook will invade on this fourth file. Um... This is tricky. So, what do I do about this impending rook fourth file situation? Because that's really the most critical threat in this position. Um, if I'm intending to raise the silver up, it's much too late. Well, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, actually. Four moves. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I need to play something defensive here. And if I shift my rook away, I'm not sure what's going on. Um, but putting the rook behind this pawn does not make sense at this time. Yeah, let's try to build a castle. Um, I know as Senta... Wait, no, I'm not playing Senta, I'm playing Gota. It's okay if I'm not trying to pressure and pursue an advantage just yet, because there's no way I can have one. Um... It's not possible for me to have an advantage this early in the game. 
So my thought was that I was going to play gold to 4-7. Or rather, 4-3. Um, I don't see a problem with this. This was what I had read out. It's possible that I've missed something. So they have bishop rook, I have golden bishop. I'm actually outnumbered unless I bring my rook over at this time. Um, if I exchange a silver, we exchange bishops, my whole position collapses. This is not good. So I think it's required that I bring the rook over, even though this opens this square for a bishop drop. I think I can handle it. So I think I've barely got this covered. This is about to get very complicated. So, well, no, if I move my silver up too far, they have this bishop drop in the corner. So this is not possible or feasible at that time. Um, Jeez, this is a mess. So it appears that I'm needing to bring some more firepower to this square here, which is our focal point. Um, this is not good. So I'm defending my bishop and having my gold defend my other gold. And this is quite the mess, and I'm really unsure where I'm going next. Uh, but likewise, I'm not sure where they're developing. Like, yes, it could be fun for them to bring the knight forward, but I don't see where it goes. Then perhaps my king does need to vacate away from my rook somehow. Um, yeah, this is awkward. Oh, actually, they have this shot on the edge of the board. Um, yeah, I'm in trouble. I'm in a lot of trouble here. Now, they have defended this weakness. So, now that they've built up a solid castle, uh, either they claim more space, or they figure out how to attack here. Um, unless they can further harden the castle. But yeah, something like that. I expect it. Okay, so I moved this gold so I could defend my bishop. And this frees my rook to defend the square. Or to defend squares in front, in fact. Um, maybe I needed to push this instead. I don't know. This is complicated, but my king is in a precarious spot. Um... I need to get away from all my other pieces here with my king. 
And yeah, I'm weathering the storm, that's for sure. I defended my center. Maybe my king runs over one more and then I bring this silver toward the center too. But then a rook swings this way eventually and I regret things. So what can I do? If I had a pawn in hand, I could chase this knight. I don't have such a pawn in hand. They have one, two, three, uh, actually four striking this pawn. That's the issue. Um... Hmm. Well, if I bring up the gold, this provokes a knight advance, which I think they are excited to play. Uh, but the knight advance could be premature. Maybe. All right, my gold generals on the third row defend each other. Both, of them, they're blocking my rook and my bishop. Um, so, that's not good. But, I think I survive. If pawn takes, center gold takes, they advance a knight to here, I suppose. And then gold from the left moves over. I'm still surviving this. Yeah, I'm nervous about moving my king anywhere because then there becomes a drop on the back rank. Well, is there... Maybe. Perhaps I need to push this edge to discourage a bishop drop promotion over this way. Um, as well as to give my knight or lance or something opportunity to advance. Um, but it's kind of a wasted move at this point. Well, I do need somewhere to move my bishop. I've been trying to, like, opportunistically exchange bishops, but... That opportunity never works in my favor. Um, okay, so I could bring up the silver, tuck the king behind the silver. A traditional duck and cover formation. <laughs> That's possible. Um... But other than that, could I really harden my castle in any way? Not that I see. Okay, they've... This prevents my knight from the right from entering the game very easily, but it does provide me a target in the form of this pawn. Um, so we're going to assume the duck and cover formation. Uh, uh, what? I have to take this, unless advancing my knight is more powerful. This appears to be a free pawn. I... I'm confused. Okay, they have another piece joining on this attack in the center. And that's very powerful, but also my attack against their bishop, which is imminent, will be very powerful too. Um, hmm. What to do? Pawn takes. Silver up, pawn takes, silver up, bishop up. It's not great. 
exchange silvers, drop the silver here, the bishop retreats. Seems okay. Um, yeah, this... I think I have to exchange here. And I think I gain a tempo from striking the bishop once it lands on 5-5. Five five. Unless I want to bring the knight out. But then they drop a silver here and I'm done. So I have to react with force. And then there is the weakness at the knight's head here, which I need to do something about. That's why I intended to duck and cover under the silver. I think the bishop retreats back toward the king to continue applying pressure here. And now I've protected the knight's head and can prepare whatever attack, if any, I might have next. If we exchange silvers on 5-5, five five, I could maybe repeat the silver drop. Or again, consider bringing the knight forward, or maybe even the silver forward. This might involve invite a silver drop there, so probably I want to have at least one general protecting my king. Um, thankfully, a bishop can defend against a fork, so I'm not sure how they make progress. Okay, so my plan was to take with the center silver, or center gold. That way, if they drop a pawn in front, um, I can run away. I can run back. I think that's playable. Yeah, I did not find any sequence here which forces me to lose material. So I select this gold. And then I could drop back. Um, I could drop back. If I move somewhere else, is that a weakness? They are attempting to open this diagonal, and they're actually going to be successful doing that. Um, man, this is going to hurt, actually. As this advances and I'm forced to open the diagonal, um, they have a silver general in hand. So if I drop the gold back and then we exchange bishops here, they could fork my rook and silver. So instead I have to go to the side. Um, no, that might be fine. But I'm making concession after concession. I've got two pawns in hand. So I've got that going for me.
I do have the fact that their knight's trapped, and I could drop a bishop to attack their rook and lance. Or rather, I could even drop a bishop on 5-5 five, five to hit two lances. Um, the world is my oyster. Yeah. I see that. Um, hmm. That's a lot of pressure. That's a lot of pressure. I think bishop 5-5 five five is my only counter here. I'm not sure how effective it is. No, this actually could work. Um, it's tricky. But yeah, they're one piece shy on the attack. Except if I've missed something, and almost certainly I have, because this is really complicated. But it appears they need one more piece to pull off a successful attack here. Um, it's very close. So I'm considering a pawn drop on the rook's head and then another pawn drop here at some point in some sequence. I don't know when. But I might need to do something like that. What I'm concerned about is bishop takes, silver takes, and this pawn advance 5-6. And maybe that's the point at which I need to bust out this combination. It's not clear. Um, I would still love to attack on the king's head here. I'm very close. But I, I don't have confidence that this attack's going to yield any fruit. It's just slightly too slow. But maybe I need to do it anyway. Gold takes or silver takes? I've been debating this for minutes here. Like, my impulse is silver takes. Because if gold takes, they push this pawn. And it's scary. And I don't like being scared. But I don't know if that's right. No, this this looks this has to be right. Um If they do anything tricky, I can drop my bishop and then pull it back to five five. And as I was saying earlier, I never pushed this edge pawn. I might regret not having done it. Um, maybe. So. Oh, that's spooky. Yeah. 
I didn't foresee this until just now, but the threats of dropping material here and advancing their attack down the fourth file compel me to play this here instead of my intended attack, which even my intended attack didn't look that interesting anyway. So, yeah, okay, they could promote. But I think I'm okay in this case where they do promote. I think they're in more danger than they accounted for. I need to get my Rook active as soon as possible here. I also need not to throw the game. Having the 5-5 five, five square available to me would be quite useful. Um, they're considering maybe a silver drop right in my camp. This is so ugly. But if the horse retreats to hit my rook... I can drop my bishop back on 5-5 five five again. It strikes the horse and strikes the lance. Uh. Alright, they are threatening a gold general. <sighs> this is so surprising, this move. Um, This makes the most sense in the event that I've walked into a checkmate. I don't think that is the case. Well, no, this could also make sense if my rook is trapped. That's actually really clever. I'm not sure that it works, but it's very original. Alright, we got one move here. Oh. Oh, that is dangerous. I was looking at my attacks against his king, and not looking at his attacks against my king. Alright, that's my mistake. Right, so I have only one move here. And this gives them an unstoppable attack against my king. And how do we stop it? Um, hmm. That looks difficult. <laughs> Um, San Julio. 
That looks very difficult to stop. I think this is my best attempt to not get checkmated here. All right, that is checkmate. Thank you for the game. Nicely played. Very well done. Wow, that that's impressive. I mean, I know I'm always trying some new things, so I'm exposing myself to... Um, harm each time I try, or exposing myself to risk each time I try something. Um, so here. Yeah, this is a very... <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, you only four many moves. <laughs> uh, so, he had me, uh, uh, I was feeling the heat, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, this looks very good. So, uh, I don't know how to counter this. Yeah. So, I tried something. But, Migishi Kambisha, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, um, maybe I should have played another waiting move. I don't know. Maybe something like this. Um, this gives my bishop somewhere to go later on. Uh, my other teaching ladder uh, game this week, uh, I lost a similar position. Um, so, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, Forgot you could do that, and now you control the square. Uh, and then at this point, I don't know what to do anymore. Um, uh, a nine percent of the time. Um, so, I have played static work before, attacking, it's difficult, 
Um, maybe here I do need to play like this or something. But the idea of something like this. Um, He always plays uh, right hand fourth foul rook, but he plays static rook or when he faces the static rook opening. Yeah. Um. It's yeah. I haven't played Static Rook in a long time, so I have, like, no bearings whatsoever here as to, like, how to play it. And here my king's kind of a sitting duck, and I'm not sure what to do with my silver. Um, but, um, yeah. Yeah, this, um, I mean, I'm just exposing how little I know here, right? So, it's amazing, this teaching ladder this week, I seem to be getting two lessons for the price of one. Um, uh, yeah, see, so, yeah, this is the normal shape. Yeah, once I saw it, thought I remembered, uh, now it's too late for me to avoid this, um, hmm. the position must be his normal static work position for Gota, if gold defends the bishop now, oh! So yeah, like, he, this gold move is just not useful in this situation. I know last teaching ladder game I got my ass handed to me because I lost the fourth file. Um, and didn't attack correctly. Um, so this time I was playing more defensively. Um... Uh, usually third file. Um, so much so that I've made uh, opening blunders, hanging pawns uh, when playing third file rook. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I definitely need to do this here. And just suck it up and say, hey, we're going to play fourth file, and I've left this side open. Yeah. So super proud and trying to win right in the opening while also suffering without a castle. So, like, I didn't know what I was doing, but absolutely, yeah, this is what I need to be doing. Just like giving this up. <sighs> so it's sad. But that's my fault. 
I just need to deal with it. Uh, that or study it more and find a way to make it work somehow. Uh, yeah, this didn't work at all. Alexei saying GG. Yeah, certainly. Uh, yeah, the my opponent really just this is a tour de force and how to play this Miki Shikin Bisha thing. Um, um hmm. I always struggle playing fourth file against right fourth file. Studied it a bit, a little, and yes, um, it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah, I need more time to study this kind of stuff. Well, it's funny because as I'm joining the tourney to master that Shogi Harbor is going to be running that tournament, now I've got a bullseye on my back saying, hey, this player doesn't know how to play this opening. So I better learn third file or something. Because I don't want to play this. I just couldn't remember that move order to get back into third file rook. But, um... Yeah, so this is very good. Yeah, this is precise. Um... Hmm. This looks so messy. And I'm so happy to grab my pawns until I'm no longer happy to have them. Um. So, yeah, I, I don't get it. Um. If I'm gonna go this way, maybe I should have saved a tempo and I don't know. Um hmm. Yeah, there are certainly some problems here. I can play Gangi the Snow Roof or Nagra Yagra. So, yeah, there's stuff I can do. Yeah, that's powerful. So, I'm both losing the game and losing the post mortem for anybody who's keeping score. Um, yeah, this looks powerful. Um,. I can move the rook to the 8th file if I had to drop a pawn or defend with the rook. Yeah. I mean, at this point, is there anything I can do other than agree with everything he says? I wonder. Um, this is super rough. I keep trying to find tactics here, but this position is unfamiliar to me. Seemingly, uh, your attack works. I just can't find any way to justify this stuff I've been doing here. Yeah, I mean, there's that, and then they take here. And then I have to, like, defend this somehow. It doesn't look defensible. Um... Uh... 
Oh, the pawn drops are not legal here. Okay, that is a consideration. Um, it's one consideration, but it's still, like, this position looks extremely hard to defend. Anything I drop, they can, like, put a silver or bishop. This is, like, I don't know. Stuff like this is threatened. Um... Just looks really hard. Yeah, my rook is trapped and theirs is not. So I need to find some combination or tactic or something to get out of this. Um, Oh, shoot. I missed this. Um, hmm. Still, like, there's gotta be some tactic, no? Hmm. So, okay. Yeah, like I said, this position is unfamiliar to me. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's a good point that this could actually hold. Um, or might be able to hold. It looks convincing enough to me. Uh, if I want to avoid all this... Don't stick my rook here in the first place, or don't open this diagonal. <laughs> I don't know. Um, oh, we play this? Okay, to defend that. And then if Rook takes one drop here. Okay. Yeah, this is another path. There's so much to consider. But, um... Is there a trick here? I don't see one. Or rather, I don't see one that works. Yeah. Yeah, that looks sound enough because the pawn drops are illegal. This um, does... Uh... Uh, it's not great, but it's something. And I think I would prefer this over the other position. Even though here I'm down a pawn, and usually I prefer... I'm like super greedy about snatching pawns. But... Um, this safety is well worth the pawn deficit. Yeah. 
Let's just say what? Um, yeah, their attack is just a bit slow in this position. Yeah, there might be something like this, but um, the idea of this sort of thing. Um, This is all, like, if I attempt to take there. Yeah, so I just play defensively. Um, I mean, maybe there is this, too. Hmm. Because that knight joins um, in a way that just ruins my position. For sure this position's like super unorthodox, but... Um, hmm. It surprised me, but um, but that seems to be the case. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what to compliment at this point. Um, Uh, since their castle is better than my castle is, or stronger. Um, since they have a really strong castle and I don't, this seems like an interesting moment for them to attack. Um, so, yeah, I took it. Um, yeah. And maybe I got too fancy here. Like, what am I supposed to play? There's a bishop fork. True. I mean, yeah, there is a bishop fork. But, well, like, what can I do? So, like, if I do something else... Um... Was I concerned about nothing here? Maybe. Oh. Maybe this is playable. Uh, 
I don't know. That seems to be the recurring theme, is I just, like, have no idea what's going on. Their attack is so swift, and I just have no idea how to counter it. Um, so... I guess to exchange bishops, they would need to do something like that. Hmm. Uh, I should give them the hat to show off like what they want to show. Oh, hmm. that's interesting, too. Um, I mean, my king is still super awkward, but um, I don't know how we assess it. Hmm. Yeah, this gets complicated, and possibly we both missed a lot of really sharp tactics somewhere. I don't know. Like, my contention was going to be, well, you have to defend against my uh, threat to take the lance. Um, but maybe they don't. Wait, they're thinking in something from here. If I missed something, it's possible I've missed something. Um... Hmm... Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's clever. Um, uh, yeah. That'll do it. Yeah. I lose again. So, um, yeah, that's brutal. So I have to run away from this gold sacrifice. Um, so my plan is to, like, attack toward their king. I might still stand equal, maybe better here. Um, yeah. 
This fork I'm not so afraid of. Uh... Wait, hang on. Um... Yes, yeah, so that's mate in one. <laughs> hey, finally, I wanted one of these variations in the post mortem, but the war is lost. There's no coming back to win the post mortem, but um, yes, yeah, so I'm not sure. This looks hard. I don't see an immediate win for either player. <laughs> Maybe should have taken a bishop before. Oh. Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I am offering it, but not sure that it helps the way they'd like it to. So... Now if the knight moves, I still have threats in the corner. They're just slightly different threats. I'm not sure how a bishop helps them. Yeah, so I like I span the entire line here. Yeah. It's kind of hard to oppose this bishop. So, I'm not sure that taking the bishop's the right answer either. Um, but like what could the answer be then? I mean, this attack is kind of exhausted if I don't take the gold general, but we still get to play a reasonable game after this. Um, I guess the most awkward aspect of this is that the rook is trapped. Um... Game uh, main variation. Um, uh, I can't find any improvement. Uh, very nicely played. Um, yeah, sorry that like I'm struggling through all this. I I'm trying, but like. They know so much more than I do. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, if I had something to share, by all means. I know I keep saying this when it comes to post-mortems. It's not that I'm not trying. It's just I'm overwhelmed. I'm spending my time coding instead of studying. And coding enhancements to Lee Shogi, so yeah. Uh, so the whole point is that once the enhancements to Lee Shogi are pushed, then every player, not just me, could benefit from it. So it's plus it'll be done once it's done, and then I can focus on Shogi as opposed to just 
trying to improve the Shogi site. So, uh, yeah. I know I'm trying to get back in the habit of playing these teaching ladders. Um, um, but it's hard to both find the time and energy and then to study on top of all that. It's worth doing for people who can afford the time and energy to do it. It's rewarding. Like, clearly my uh, 4Q opponent, who is ranking up, um, very much benefits from this. And I, in general, benefit from being able to play a good game and entertain an audience. But today, the, my opponent played so masterfully. I'm impressed. I looked at the ratings going into the match and thought this would be an excellent opportunity for me to try to learn something play something I've not exactly played before. I've done this in chess before, too, where I'll look at player ratings and I'll decide whether or not I'm going to play the same thing I've played a hundred times or if I'm going to play something slightly different. Um, so. Yeah. Um, and this time I elected to play something different and different still from the previous teaching ladder game where I actually had a convincing attack, um, but I let it get away four times. The engine had four times noted that I messed up in the previous game. This game, I just... it was a mess. Um, yeah, there's just... wait, follow the latest position. Yeah, so I could actually revert moves on the main line here. Um, Alright. Let's explore the game. Cool. So once they leave, I'll be the host again. And now I'm the host, so I can go back to the main variation. And we can look at the final position together. And ruminate. Actually, yes, I didn't comment much about the end game. If you recognize the kanji figures, chances are you recognize this checkmate. Um, so, yeah, just, like, that's a bishop. That's a promoted bishop of horse. So, like, they control all these squares around my king. And I have zero generals anywhere nearby. So the only thing I can do is block at the rook. So when did this become possible? Well, this became possible when I dropped my pawn back here to attempt to ensnare the bishop. I got greedy. Is there another way through this? I could grovel. I got tired of groveling. So, I just... I mean, I've been thinking about moves like bring my knight out. Bring my silver out. And I'm looking at all this and seeing, gosh, I really don't have an attack here. Gosh, the silver on 5-5 five five is really in my way. And I just... Between that and this threat of silver drop here... Um, which maybe I misread. Like, I read it out multiple times. Silver drop, gold takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, promote. Hits the center, hits the rook. Um, allows them to push this pawn forward. Um, yeah, I could maybe survive that, but it would be super painful. So if they, like, actually placed a silver general here, it's just not... Yeah, there's not much I can do. Um, other than jettison the rook, it's probably the best option. Um, so yeah, very nicely played by my opponent, who's studied um, this... Right hand fourth foul rook. I've studied it enough in conjunction with opponents who are proponents of opponents who are proponents of this proponents. Um, they all like this right hand fourth foul rook idea. I've not found time to find a counter to it, and maybe I should start playing it. On the other hand, um, I always castle my king to the right. So, I can only play right hand fourth foul rook if I'm going to castle my king to the left. 
and that usually works best against certain openings and not against other openings. So, um, there's still a lot for me to learn. Yeah, very nicely played. Thanks for the game.